EFCO Lesson 5B Medic First Aid for Divers This is probably the shortest Medic First Aid course in the world. In any other course you would learn more. Yet we will practice 5 of the most common life saving techniques. When emergencies happen the natural inborn tendency of people is to just watch and wait and believe that someone else will know better what to do. But as a diver you are likely to be the first one around that can offer help and sometimes you are the only one around. We coaches have to change our and our participants mindsets. When something goes wrong, be ready to help, be the first one to help, start doing something, something logical, don't try to be perfect, but just get into action. Accidents are messy, maybe you will not be able to solve them. But you have to try, you have to get up and say, I'm going to deal with this as good as I can and I'm not going to stop until this emergency situation has passed. The five topics are response to choking, managing bleedings, CPR, managing fractures and dealing with aquatic injuries. When you are the coach giving this lesson, then create some kind of dummy. Get a t-shirt or a wetsuit stuffed with pillows and use a dive mask as a face. Response to choking. If you are at a restaurant and all at once someone stands up and starts grabbing his throat and he turns blue and tries to scream but no sound comes out, then he is probably choking on a piece of chicken for example. In this case, there is no time to call an ambulance, there is no time to look for a nurse or a doctor, the only person that can do something now is you. Grab the victim from behind, place your fist in his stomach and pull inwards and upwards. You are trying to compress the lungs in the hope that a piece of chicken will shoot out of his throat. You cannot directly surround the lungs with your arms, because the ribs are in the way. So you have to apply those lung compressions via the stomach. If that didn't work, then sit him down and place his head between his knees and slap him powerfully between the shoulder blades. If that still does not work, then sit him up and tell him to open his mouth. Stick your fingers in and try to find that piece of chicken. If you can't find it, then repeat this procedure three times. Every time you repeat, use some extra force. Don't be scared to leave some bruises, that piece of chicken has to come out. If you are the coach, then let all participants try this three rounds, on the dummy, not on a real person. I just fell through the window. Managing bleeding. My wrist is Imagine I fell through a window and cut open my wrist. I'm sitting here and the blood is squirting out of my wrist. What would you do? Directly stop the blood from going out in any way. Apply pressure. Use your body weight. Putting a bandage on is a second priority. Your first priority is to lose as little blood as possible. After placing a bandage, lay the person down and elevate the affected area. If the bleeding still does not stop, then apply a pressure point. Let's practice. Let someone find your pulse and tell them to make a squirt sound every time they feel your heartbeat. Imagine that is the sound of your blood squirting out of your wrist. Now press below the bicep towards the bone. You have to squeeze that artery between your fingertips and the bone. Keep trying that until your buddy stops making that squirt sound. There you go, your buddy now no longer feels your pulse. And maybe you can feel your own pulse behind your fingertips. You have successfully applied the pressure point. CPR. In case you find a person laying on the ground, first check if they are not just sleeping. Shake them if they don't wake up. First of all, make sure Someone calls an ambulance. Then look if the person is breathing. If you don't hear him breathe, and if you don't see the chest rise and fall, 
then he is probably not breathing. Start with two rescue breaths. Open the airway by holding one hand under the neck. Close the nose with the other hand and blow into the mouth of the victim. As you blow, check if the chest is rising. If not, then you got to change something. The heart is not pumping, so you will have to pump the blood through the victim's body. The right place to apply pressure is two fingers above the point where the ribs meet. Now press and count fast towards 15 at this speed. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Again, two rescue breaths and continue with those 15 compressions again. Get used to the rhythm. Keep going. Practice it for at least three minutes. If you're the coach, then simulate the chest movement by raising the t-shirt when they breathe in. But only if they are pinching the nose and extending the airway. After three minutes we pretend the person starts breathing, but he is still unconscious. And then place him in the recovery position. The main objective is to have his mouth facing towards the floor so his saliva or vomit will fall away. Managing fractures or broken bones. The general recommendation is to not touch people with broken bones and to just wait for professionals to arrive. But that's easier said than done. First of all, if after a motorbike accident an injured person is laying on the hot road in the sun, then you'll have to move him. The road can get as hot as boiling water. The exiting method we have practiced in our rescue training we can also use for moving a person a few meters towards shade and safety. Also, if you are on a small island and a doctor on the phone tells you to bring the victim to mainland, then you'll have to transport him. In that case, find a way to stabilize the fracture. Bamboo sticks on both sides are great. Use four tie-on points, two above the fracture and two below. Make a stretcher out of any flat okay. surface One, to carry the two, person three. for transport. Down. Aquatic injuries. Second drowning. If it's possible that someone did get some water in the lungs, but now they appear fine, then keep a close look. Water in the lungs can start a chemical reaction that draws even more bodily fluids in the lungs. Some people have died in the night after being rescued from a drowning. They could either stay at observation in a hospital or if you sleep next to them set your alarm clock 30 minutes apart and listen if the breathing sounds dry. If you hear a sputter or a spongy sound from their breathing then rush them to the hospital. Jellyfish stings. Spray them with vinegar. Fill an old paraffin bottle with vinegar and add it to your first aid bag. Don't scratch, because you might move invisible tentacles to areas not yet affected. Coral cuts. Small cuts happen now and then. Just continue your dive, but afterwards clean them with water and soap, and once you can, apply a wound care cream. There's a lot of bacterial life on corals, so those cuts often start infecting a bit. If that is the case, you could also spray them with some hydrogen peroxide. Stonefish or lionfish stings. They hurt a lot and cause swelling. The best you can do is soak the affected body part in hot water, as hot as you can stand, that's about 50 degrees Celsius. That is supposed to reduce the effects of the poison. That's it for our mini medic first aid practice. If you get a chance, follow a course with the Red Cross, for example. But most of all, when emergencies arise, get into action and do what you can.